Hi everyone. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Daisy and Fiona has been before. Who else has been before? Oh, I've been before. Okay, so for all those who don't have their hand up right now, can you keep your hand up again? Who's been before? Keep it higher, higher. Okay. So that everyone who hasn't had their hands up, these guys, one, two, three, four, five. They're your buddies, okay? <laughs> so make sure you say hi and see why they've come back, right? That's your question. I'd also love for you to look out for one person that you don't know the fate, that you've never met before, and say hi and ask that question. Why, why did you come today? So that you all get to know each other a little bit. My, ch my, my challenge will be to get to know all of you in the next two hours, but I'm really aiming to manage that, which is why we keep the walk-in order at Reese Hall. You know, it's 30 tickets, we're completely sold out. Whoever hasn't booked early didn't make it, and I know and my email inbox has exploded quite literally this week. And um, everyone was really hot for these tickets, so you guys are privileged. What um, we did here is something we started four years ago. The walk in wardrobe is the idea that everything you see on, displayed on these rails is already yours. You've paid your ticket price and therefore it's all yours. It's as if it's an extension of your home. All I want you to do is to try on first. We've got changing rooms, the windows are shut. If you don't feel shy, it's all girls here. But we also have two changing rooms at the back with mirrors. So the, the one criteria for you to be allowed to take stuff home, and I'm not limiting how much you take, I want, if, if, you, if everything fits you and you like all of it, please, by all means. Yeah. It must have been us not like in my bedroom. Take it. <laughs> take it all. Take it all. But is that a fair, is, does, is everyone clear on that one rule, right? It's, yeah. it's fair, isn't it? I don't want, I don't need more clothes to, to add to this but I want all of these homes to find, close to finding your home. So do try on first. Um, the other thing is that we also have a special discount code for everyone who's here today for our next one in six months. So you all get an email this evening to have 48 hours to get that done, okay? Um, and without further ado, I'd love to introduce you to our panelist, who is Char from, from Bello, and she'll share a little bit with you about her bags, which you can have a look at over there. So everything past this is for sale. Everything past there <laughs> is, <laughs> is part of the close-up. So do have a look on both, end, both ends. And without further ado, I'll pass you on to Char to tell you a little bit about her brand and what happened with that, OK? Oh, well, hi, everyone. I'm Char. Thank you so much for having me, Daisy. Um, myself and one of my best friends, Maria, we started from Bello which has got a mission to speak good news into the world. So we take materials such as um, recycled seat belts and plastic bottles. So this is actually made from Porsche seat belts. So if you own this, <laughs> you can say that you have your own Porsche. <laughs> a little bit cheaper than the one with four wheels. But, um, and every, so we try and refurbish and recondition materials once destined for landfill. And then everything that is made is um, handmade by our team, which are all paid about the living wages. Um, my business partner and best friend, she also manages all the workers out in Brazil and we reinvest back into that community. So we work with a lot of workers who are based in the slums or favelas. And every bag that we sell donates meals to the homeless in need for our partner charity, Casa de Maria. Um, and so far we're coming up to we've been about a year and a bit now that we've been working and we've donated about a thousand and four meals, um, which is amazing. Um, thank you. Yeah. And then we've just recently, we've just been allowed to say actually we're finalists um, for the New York Independent Handbag Awards as well, um, which is going to be happening in June, which is Ooh. huge, <laughs> for the green handbag, the best green handbag and also the most socially conscious handbag, so wow. really exciting. So please come and chat more because I've got lots more to tell you all, but um, I think we've got a tight schedule today, so please come and have a, have a chinwag. Thank you so much. No worries. Everyone give us a <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So now um, we have the scheduled panel discussion for which I completely left my notes somewhere on the boat in my 
my team are searching for them frantically. I'm <laughs> relaxed here, and I'm just gonna, you know, hope I remember. I've only got back. Now that was not what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. I'll just tell you a little. I'll just introduce you to our panels and why I've chosen them, and then they can tell you a little bit about them. So we've got Roberta Lee. Um, from the Ethical Brand Directory, and Roberta is a colleague of mine because she's also a personal stylist. Yeah. Roberta, um, thank you for coming. You're welcome. Well, thank you for having me, Daisy. Excellent. And Tara, Tara Button. Tara Button, everyone, <laughs> is the author of my favorite book of all times <laughs> at the moment. So if you want to, <laughs> well, I can never say that like for indefinite. So I'm, I'm just, you know, keeping my. Keeping my <laughs> yes, and now my copy is, is signed. So you guys now have the unique opportunity to get your signed as well. Literally, the best thing I've read in a long time. Um, <laughs> yes, which is why I wrote a blog post on it. Five books you read on to read on sustainable fashion, and three to avoid. There are some to avoid. Um, and Tara is right up at the front. So Tara is from Buy Me Once, yeah. which is a platform, um, a market platform where everything is about living forever, right? Yeah. So if you buy something there, you can pretty much expect it to last, last as long as it is it can do. Exactly. Yeah. So it, have I missed anything in my introduction about both of you? No, that's perfect. Is there yeah. something you'd like to add to the people so that they know something about you that is not on your bio? Not in our bio. Not in our bio. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because they're going to be like, hi, I'm Zoe. And you're just like, hi, I'm, and you're, you know, you're making friends here today. So okay, you've caught me off guard here now. I'm just trying yeah, to think. It's so not on my bio. Okay, we'll leave, shall we leave that question to the very end then? Does, every, does everyone want to know something that is not on their bio? Is that, is that on the list? Yeah. yeah, I think they would like that. Okay, so we'll leave that on the, to the end. Hi. Um, so tell us about your businesses and why you are interested in sustainable fashion. What was the pivot? Was there a moment, Tara? I know your story is really a bit weird. A bit weird. <laughs> I'd love for you to tell us what has happened that sure. you know got you on that on that journey and, and got you started. Sure. Well, it was a very weird thing that happened. Uh, my life changed when I was given a cooking pot. It's a very strange <laughs> thing to change your life. But I was given this amazing Le Creuset cooking pot and at this time I was definitely a kind of shopaholic would pretty much as soon as I had spare cash I would look for something to spend on so I had a you know disaster of a flat full of rubbish essentially when I was given this pot I was like why isn't everything in my life like this and I could suddenly see the value of something that would last a really long time something that was worthy of being taken care of something that I could pass down to my grandchildren. And this kind of created a domino effect of thought that essentially led to me uh, realizing that actually long-lasting products not only help you from a point of view of saving money over time, saving clutter over time, but environmentally is absolutely massive. So I don't know if any of you guys know, but if you get a t-shirt to last just nine months longer than the average, you save 20 to 30 percent on the carbon emissions. And that's just one t-shirt lasting a little bit longer. So actually the best thing you can do for the environment is to buy for the long term. And that sparked a website with a whole load of products on it where I researched the longest lasting option in each product category, everything from pots to t-shirts. Um, <laughs> and that went viral in 2016, which was insane. And uh, all the things that happen in movies when you went viral happened, including being asked to write a book. And I then did that. And actually, that was an incredible experience because it made me realize how conditioned we are to throw away and constantly feel like we need new stuff to validate ourselves and how much pressure there is on us. And I'm put so it also beautifully. Thank you. So this is how not to do that, to find your own style and... Um, and I have to say that whenever I'm doing online shopping for clients, Buy Me Ones is one of the places I look at first because it just, you know, I know I know a client at the moment is 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 is, is having a few deliveries coming coming from you guys. So it's, 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 it's a really really something to check out. 
Roberta, what about you? What got you into sustainability? Because you, you make sure that that's part of your ethos with the ethical brand director. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and the story that came with that? Sure, sure. So, hi everybody. Um, so, yes, yeah, so in around about 2014, when I was sort of setting up my business, I was thinking a lot more around you know, the people that I was interacting with, and it just so happened that uh, there were a lot of sort of emerging entrepreneurs and they were in the sort of social space. And it sort of got me thinking a little bit more about we have a unique opportunity when we run our own businesses, how we can sort of set the foundations for how we want to build. And it just really got me thinking about the things that frustrated me the most. So um, as I was kind of like, you know, doing more with my personal styling, I wasn't necessarily focused on ethical or sustainable fashion, but I was thinking about, oh, maybe we can do more with what we've already got. Um, but so as I learned more about the fashion industry and through these female entrepreneurs that were setting up ethical fashion brands, my kind of world just really exploded and I thought, oh my goodness, I've got a real responsibility as a stylist. Like, I can't encourage people to go out and just shop, shop, shop when I now know and understand the consequences of the fashion industry. So I felt really conflicted, like, hmm, uh, how am I supposed to build my career <laughs> if, uh, uh, and encourage people to you know, style themselves if uh, I can't really encourage them to go and shop on the high street? And so what happened is I started to find these small independent brands, like from Bello, for example. Thank you. Um, they are you know, small brands when they're starting out, and you get a real opportunity to speak to the founders, find out their story, ask them lots of questions about their supply chain, their workers, the materials they use, what their plans are for the future. And then I thought, okay, well, that's kind of got my vote. I'm going to put that on a spreadsheet. <laughs> and uh, that spreadsheet uh, looked a bit ugly to go on my website. And I thought, oh, you know, as a stylist, I want everything to look pretty. So <laughs> that sort of evolved. And uh, my partner built a bespoke kind of website for me. And that's Ethical Brand Directory, which we have today. And uh, yeah, the whole idea around that is that these brands have all sort of really focused on certain values. And I recognize as individuals, we all find different things important. And so, you know, if you're a vegan, like you're going to shop very differently to somebody that's an environmentalist, for example, that focuses on different elements. And I didn't want to make it so restrictive that lots of different brands that were starting out couldn't apply and have a place. Because I also felt like in order for, you know, long term systematic change, like from consumers and businesses, we actually need to be more inclusive and give everybody an opportunity and a chance to say where they are, where they want to go, and help them grow. So that was the reason I set up Ethical Brand Directory, clearly a resource for me to send clients to so that I didn't have to do so much hard work and I could just say, hey, I found these brands, I trust them, you trust me, please look there. Um, but then that sort of grew into something more. We did events and realized these brands wanted a community. And uh, more recently, we've actually launched Ethical Brand Academy, so these small independent brands that need more help and guidance to become more ethical and sustainable, um, that's what we're providing for them. And it ties in really nicely with my styling work, so I don't feel like I'm conflicting on my values. So like Daisy, I'm a really big fan of shopping and doing pre-loved first for everything, investing in new things second. So I'm really, really pleased to support Daisy with her fantastic initiative here today because it's very much in line with my values. Thank you, Roberta. That's amazing. Um, it wouldn't happen if people didn't sign up, so you guys wrote it with your cash today to say, yes, I'm coming, I'm taking time out, and let's do this. So I appreciate that. What can our lovely community do that's one small change that would allow them to feel better about their purchases or about lifestyle in general because we are aiming for better rather than good aren't we I mean it's 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 all often that challenge of sustainability is a big word and then we get an overwhelm and that can paralyze so from your perspective you've been in this field for so long you've you've seen people transition and, and make those changes and also have that personal mindset change as well what has helped you to not be overwhelmed, to not get paralyzed, but to do one small step to start with that everyone could implement here today? Tara, would you like to start? Sure. So I would say that the, the biggest um, kind of environmental damage we're doing when it comes to clothes shopping is that so many of us kind of, we have an event or we have a holiday and we were like, oh, oh panic, 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 got to get something to this. 
and we don't leave ourselves um, enough time and, and therefore we end up getting something that we'll do and we end up with a wardrobe of stuff that we'll do and that's when we get the kind of classic open your wardrobe uh, I don't, I'm not sure about anything in it and that's such a kind of classic thing for, for people to feel so what I would say is as a simple step take a step back and just um, do a bit of research into your own style and get a real sense of, of what suits you in terms of texture, shape, colour, and you know, stylists are amazing at helping you do that. I didn't I didn't script this for her by the way. We all know I did not script this, but it is also in her book. <laughs> but I think just knowing yourself it just means that you're not gonna get buffeted by the trends and the advertising that then says, Oh, this pink is in and that pink is out, which you might not twig consciously but subconsciously you're taking it all in and then the next time you're out um, shopping you're like oh yeah I quite like that pink I'm drawn to that pink I'm not sure why but you end up actually buying things that aren't right for you that don't look you know um, as you might want them to and just having that self-knowledge from the outset is is just gonna help you buy things for the long term which is what um, I would encourage everyone to do yeah, good, good suggestion. Is that something we can take on board? Like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're on, we're on board. We're gonna do that. That's our homework. Roberto, what would be your small change? Well, okay, well, I mean, I just echo that I do believe, and actually it's one of my talks, that knowing your signature style can save the planet. So what Tara said is totally true. I think if we do focus on that, it's a really great step. But I want to offer something different to, um, to what Tara said. Take a step back it's really important to look at what you do in your everyday life. Now, to kind of get involved in sustainability, you don't necessarily have to start with your wardrobe. You can start anywhere in your life. But the key is to look at where you see the excess. Like, so look in your home. Are you putting out tons of trash bags? Is your recycling bin always overflowing? You know, like, where, what are you kind of consuming the most of? So, for, on my journey, my consumption was excessive for clothes. So. Hence, I gave up buying clothes for a year, that turned into two years, that turned into two and a half years. So I stopped buying anything unless I really, truly needed it. And then I would sort of encourage you to think about what you can do differently instead of just buying something. Can you prepare things at home? Can you borrow? Can you swap? Can you rent? And if you do need to invest in something new, ask yourself, would you use this 100 times? Like, I've got a hashtag 100 wears, but I also apply that to 100 uses. It's a really good benchmark for thinking about the longevity of something and thinking, you know, cost per use, cost per wear is actually the new metric that we should be looking at. So don't think about what's, you know, cheap, fast and convenient. But think about what's going, going to last and serve you for the duration. That's a much better investment and it's a much easier transition <coughs> rather than trying to change lots and lots and lots of things. Just focus on, you know, for example, you might be trying to go... 25% less plastic in your home, you know, so just start on one or two things that you feel that you've got control over, and then uh, once you've kind of got that, then you just start on the next thing. Yes, so it's just a small everyday transitions really help, and always remember when you're doing it, try to get your family or your best friend or your neighbour, because the compound effect is how we make significant change happen. Well, I'm going to open it up to you guys for about two to three questions. So we do want to let you all loose onto the itching for the rehearsal. On the <laughs> red for two thirty. Um, so before we do that, how can our lovely audience connect with you? How can they find you, Roberta? What if you if if you could? Yeah, if there's one thing you want them to do, yeah. what would that be? Well, I would love for you to when you're online next, just to type in ethical brand directory. Okay, that, that will bring up the ethical brand directory. <laughs> and uh, just to take a look at all of these wonderful brands that are doing really good by people, animals, and planet. And just consider if there's one thing that you could do differently when you're going to purchase something new. Think about supporting some of these independent brands. You know, that from Bello, they're on the directory. We absolutely love them. Look. <laughs> look. <laughs> Championing, you. wearing your values. It's such an empowering thing to do. So that would be my one thing for you. Thank you. Yeah, okay.
Okay, Tara, what would you like our audience to do to get in touch with you or for the one call to action? <laughs> well, it, the easiest way of getting in touch with me is through my website, which is Buy Me Once. There's a UK version and the US version, so make sure you're on the right one. Um, and you can email me through the website on the contact page. Uh, or sign up to our newsletters because cool. we do kind of research products constantly. We're finding new brands all the time, and you know our categories are you know what's the most long-lasting and what's the most ethical and sustainable, and we'll find the best from each product category, and we'll like constantly be telling you what we found. So incredible, lovely. Well, we all know what to do next. So ethical brand directory and buy me once dot. for reward because I was bored because the internet made it super easy because I was lazy and I didn't return things within the four weeks so I, I amassed a lot of stuff um, and I actually loved fashion I loved creating lots of outfits so for me the transition from going being seen in something new all the time